These are referred to as perilymph. That's what the fluid is inside of these. Peri, around. Okay, let's go back to our guy. He's tired down here. He looked up. He didn't see any joy in looking at the semicircular canals. So he decides to whip out the Swiss Army knife one more time. And he jumps down and cuts through the round window. And he starts to walk into the cochlea. When he walks inside the cochlea, he finds that he really can't go very far because when he goes deep, he sees this. And now he's like, what the hell is that? I can't go very far. I'm not that small. And, he, and essentially now his journey is pretty much over because each one of these turns in the scale or the cochlea has these little chambers where the two big ones have perilymph and the inside one has endolymph. This endolymph has something that's kind of little special on it. And let me kind of do, do a little blow up of this. So now inside that little area is these three little chambers that I'm drawing this right here. The two outside ones have perilymph. And the inner one has endolymph. Right at the base of this, there's a little structure that kind of looks like a little bump, like that. And I'm going to blow that little bump up like this. This little blow up that I'm drawing that's inside this little chamber where the endolymph is has a name. It's referred to as the organ. Remember, there's liquid in there. Okay? Now, this is, a, I don't think this is on your handheld, so hand up, so just watch. So, there's liquid. <clears throat> Notice what happened to our guy. What the guy did is he climbed into the ear, there was a vibration in the tympanic membrane. The vibration was transmitted through the free bones, like Morse code. It then vibrated that, or, that oval window. Inside that little area where the cochlea is fluid, what happens if you vibrate the fluid? You get ripples in it, right? Mm -hmm. Now that rippling fluid is then going to make its way into this chamber where the endolymph is, and it's going to move these things. These little things are referred to as hair cells. And as I move these, these little hair cells are neural cells. They're neural receptors. As that endolymph moves those little hair cells, I then transmit that hearing information along to cranial nerve number eight for hearing. Can I get the idea? So it's the fluid movement that moved these, that bent these little hairs. It's like kind of like wheat in a field. And as they bent, they then transmitted that information back to cranial nerve number eight as it went back to the brain, to the temporal lobe. Awesome. <coughs> Ruben, you're going to have to move Sorry. back just a little Sorry bit. Sorry about it. Okay, you kind of get the idea. All right, so let's kind of run through this one more time and then we'll cut open the eye real quick. <clears throat> Our little man came in, came through the oracle, or peanut, climbed into the external ear. He encountered the tympanic membrane. He decided to cut through it. He climbed along three bones, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. 
he sat on the stage and found that he could see two windows, one right behind the bone he was sitting on, the oval, one that was going to be connected to the cochlea, the round. He decided to look up. He saw three little canals that were perpendicular to one another, the semicircular canals. Those are there for balance that has the vestibular portion of the nerve connected to it. He dropped down and cut through the round window and he walked into the cochlea. He saw this view that the inside of the snail had these little chambers that had all kinds of fluid in it. The big outside chambers had perimen. You're going to have to the bed. Inside we had a chamber that had endolymph in it. In the chamber with the endolymph was a neural receptor, the organ of cortex, that had these little hair cells on it. That as the endolymph moved over those little fields of wheat, they stimulated the hair cells that then took that information back through cranial nerve number eight, back to the temporal lobe for hearing, for processing. Yeah? Yeah? Same thing, folks, that we just did with the vision. That's way easier to do than staring at a picture and memorizing the parts. Make sound come into the ear. What did it encounter? Which way did I go? Kind of got the idea. All right, so let's go over to the eyes. So we look at this little model. This is an actual, this is a little eye. So, um, Amanda, can you give me a beer? Right next to my water bottle is that probe we had earlier. Thank you. Is that human? Hmm? Is this Macau as well, or is human? Or? This is the, an ox eye. But if you look at the side, you can see the optic nerve. Let me go back. Can you see the optic nerve sticking off the back side on the side, right? Then as you opened up inside the eye, <clears throat> what you're looking at in terms of the lining is the retina. That's also the posterior chamber with that vitreous humor inside. Then if I turn this, you can see the white that's on the back side here and here. That was the sclera. All the stuff that's floating off the back side of this as I kind of make it float, See that? Is part of the ciliary body. <clears throat> we came forward into another chamber. That was the anterior chamber where we had aqueous humor, water based humor. And then the little disc that you're seeing on the outside, the very thing that you can see first from this side, is the cornea. Okay? So when we look at our little cow eye, A lot of fat, and so you see back here, this is structural fat, but all this is in the back. I'll cut through some of this in a minute. You can see that the out, this is part of, you can see a little bit of the eyelash and part of the conjunction over here, right? Hey, what do you want from my life? So what we want to find is we want to keep part of this optic nerve. So we're going to kind of dig around here a little bit, and I'm going to cut some of the fat off. Okay. Okay. So from the post year aspect. <clears throat> You see the optic nerve, that's this piece right here. Okay, so I can just take the probe and I can move around it a little bit. <clears throat> I'm gonna peel, and this kind of stuff peels off, this fat peels off pretty easily. So I can just peel part of that off. <clears throat> 